Welcome to the kickoff call for Smart Tank Thursdays. Uh, my name is Sarah Deitch and I am a customer success manager with Skybits. On behalf, on, excuse me, on behalf of myself and the entire Skybits team, we want to welcome all of you. Um, thank you for attending. We hope that these one hour sessions will improve your level of understanding within the Smart Tank tool in order to bolster your confidence in using our best in class user interface to its fullest potential. So the intent of these trainings, I kind of wanted to do a little review of that, um, is to do as much of a live demonstration as possible with minimal PowerPoints. So I'm showing a PowerPoint now, but I'm going to go live into the application. Um, occasionally we may have to use some PowerPoint slides, but we're going to try to avoid that. Um, and there are a few housekeeping items that I wanted to review with everybody before we dive in. So everyone is muted um, at all the participant lines. We do have some staff on the call. Um, they can unmute themselves and come and go as they need to, but we're gonna keep everyone muted for the majority of the call. Um, but if you're muting yourself and you wanna ask a question later, we cannot unmute you at that point. So you're gonna to have to do that for yourself. We have factored in time for questions and answers. So you can also type questions a multitude of ways. If you could keep them in the question section, that would be great. Again, I have um, my colleagues on the call with us as well. So they'll be able to, as I'm speaking, answer some questions um, and provide you with any information that you may need. There is a chat feature as well, so you can type in the chat, type in the questions. So please do that and feel free. Um, and we did receive some questions from your responses to attendance of the webinar. Um, and thank you for that, that's fantastic. It gives us plenty of information and lets us know kind of what people want us to gear our future training sessions towards. Um, I wanted to also talk about where these recordings will be. So we will be recording all of these sessions and putting them on the Skybits YouTube channel. Um, what I wanna say now, and I'm gonna say it again later, just so you know, um, just to let you know, we're all gonna try to get y'all to go to our Skybits YouTube channel and become a subscriber. It's just as simple as logging into YouTube, putting in Skybits and hitting that subscribe button. So let's make sure you want to watch these videos again and again because you may have heard some valuable information, you may have missed some, uh, go to the Skybits YouTube channel, subscribe, and you'll be able to not only see the Smart Tank Thursdays training sessions and informational sessions, but you'll also be able to um, get some information that may help you out and, and help you run your business better. Um, we do have some videos from our other uh, departments, our sales departments, our marketing departments, all of our departments will then put all of our videos, uh, Skybits videos into the YouTube channel and you can click through and um, if there's anything that you need, um, you probably be able to find it on that Skybits YouTube channel. So I want to make sure that I hit that home <laughs> with everybody. Um, again, I'll probably say it later, but just want to let you know, we do have a YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. Um, so this week, um, what we're going to talk about, and we're not going to dive super deep into the web application today because we really wanted to make sure you understood that um, <clears throat> Skybits is putting our best put, foot forward with our customers and tank monitoring um, division. We want to make sure that you know that there are people here for you. You have resources beyond the website, beyond the, the phone calls uh, to our fantastic telemetry support department. Um, <clears throat> and our manager of telemetry support is on this call as well, Allison Ramos. Um, that team is fantastic, as I'm sure most of you know, but there are other resources, right? There will be these videos now. We're going to have our Thursday, every Thursday at 11 Eastern Standard, we're gonna have these um, sessions. And, you know, there are other resources for you. You don't have to feel like you need to do everything on your own. So a lot of you have been doing that probably for a while. Now's the time reaching out to our customers to let you know we value you, we appreciate your business, and we want to work as a team with this and get some ideas for future sessions after these initial sessions we have created. So that said, <laughs> 
what I'm going to go over today is just kind of talk about Smart Tank, how to navigate. Um, I'm sure most of you know how to log in, but I can't guarantee that everybody has logged into the user interface. Selecting your organization, performing a global search, and searching for a tank, a specific tank. How can I find a tank? There are a couple ways to do that. So when you think about Smart Tank, why? Why would you, you know, why are you using our monitors? Smart Tank level and analytics portal. Why would you go there? So all the critical tank data that you need to make the smartest inventory management decisions are right there at your uh, fingertips. Levels, details, trends, locating, logging, reporting, all those tools are right there. You have 24-7 visibility to web and mobile tools and training. So we do offer training. You just have to ask for it. <laughs> we, we can train you on how to use different parts of the tool, as well as these general sessions that we're running right now. You can improve your workflow. You've hopefully seen um, ability. You had to um, increase visibility into your tanks. Uh, you can move more product more efficiently and increase your delivery margins. Uh, the tank types that we support, large and mini bulk tanks, IBC tanks and totes, underground tanks as well, and propane. Uh, the vertical markets that we serve, pretty diverse, uh, fuel, diesel and gas, of course, um, agriculture, corrosive and non-corrosive chemicals, um, liquid and compressed gas, lubes, and water. So we can monitor what you're putting into your tanks. And I'm sure most of you know that, you're probably already customers of ours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move away from my slide here and I will get us into the portal. So how do I get to the portal? The portal is, I'm sure you have it bookmarked, but if you don't, just wanted to go. I'm really gonna be basic here today. Um, we're gonna log into the portal here. And on the Skybits um, website, skybits.com, there's a login uh, selection at the top. We do service uh, three different business lines right here with, at Skybits. Smart Tank is right in the middle, so you would log in. And then your, your username and your password, which are unique to you, um, would be entered right here. Uh, you can log in right here as well. And then the Smart Tank Training Thursdays, live educational webinars. If you don't, if you have it registered for the other ones, if you wanna pass it on to your colleagues, if you find that this is a really helpful program uh, and you want the rest of your colleagues to attend, please send them to the homepage of uh, the login page for the user interface and have them click right here. You can register for the rest of the series at this point. So once you log in, you're gonna to come to the navigation page, right? So here is the command center. Now, I just wanna make it clear, depending on your level of accessibility to Smart Tank, you're going to see different things at different phases, What uh, phases of the website. Um, what I'm doing is I'm an administrator right now, and I'm going to kind of go through as an administrator. Um, but at the very least, you know, when you log in, you're able to see um, the navigation information. So you're able to look right here at this page and see some, everybody at least has this page. So on this page right here, what we're looking at is the user profile. So up at the top, who's logged in? You can see right here, you're logged in, but... It's going to say who you're logged in as. Um, some people have to log in as colleagues or customers, you know, to ensure that their view is what they're supposed to be seeing. Um, so logged in as uh, my profile. Um, it allows you to go in and change your password and, and change any information or update it. And of course, you can log out right here. Um, anyone who signed you up for the website would be your administrative contact, the person who's in your profile as uh, your assignee. So my colleague is the one who set me up with um, access to Smart Tank in general. Um, so his name appears here, um, and then the phone number that uh, you can contact for support is up here as well. So this is just administrative, um, very basic stuff right here. And you can click on anything that's blue and dive into it and go into detail. So my profile just do, oh, <laughs> that wasn't good. <laughs> there we go. My, I don't think I was clicking enough and left it open. 
my profile. Here's my information. Um, I can change my, like I said, change my password, change my information. If I need to change my time zone, we default to central um, information right here that you can update. And then you would update your profile or once you start typing in this new and confirm password, you would then hit change my password. So that's very basic information that you can navigate to here when you're in this upper navigational portion. So let's go back home and we're in the home screen. So you know when you're on this, you're on the home screen. And you're always gonna see, and I'm just gonna talk about this now because it's hovering right there, but you're gonna see the path that you've taken to get where you are. So you can always go back to the high, throughout your um, hierarchy here, um, just because I know most people have a question, where am I in the site? That's where I am right now. We're using a demo portal. Um, so that's why it says Smart Tank Demo Partner View. Um, now this area up here is the menu bar. And I described we're at the home stage, right? We're at the home page right here. We can go into reports right here if you have set up any reports. Now, just so you know, some people will say, oh, you have reports. I've heard it plenty of times. I manage uh, a nice size number of customers, deal with them directly on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, you have reports. Yes, we have reports. We are going to dive into that section of the user interface. It's gonna have its own time frame, so you get dedicated time to learning about reports, setting up reports, who can get them, who, you know, what you want to do with reporting is up to you, but we will dive into that deeper. Everything I'm going over here right now, we're going to go deeper into it. So um, rest assured, this is just step number one in this journey here. Um, tanks. Um, tanks will allow you to see the tank list of um, your user viewability. Um, users, if you're able to you know, go into this section, you're able to see all users under your purview and make any adjustments, change passwords, that kind of stuff. Um, organizations is where you would go to add new organizations to your overall account. Just see which organizations you have. You can set up different items within this organizational section. Um, but again, we're gonna dive deeper into what you can do with organizations in a future session to, you know, but that needs a, a little bit more time allotted than just this, you know, hour that we have here scattered uh, with different topics. And location similar, uh, where you can go to see which locations you have. You can set up new locations, so you're able to go in and see every location, and I'll just click on that real quick. You can see your locations and you can go into them as well. So those are different sections that you can go into in the menu bar. So that's what this is up here. Now the other part of the menu bar, I'm echoing, so I'm not sure if somebody's off mute. Okay. Um, over here to the right is the search bar. So the search bar is pretty useful. I use it constantly, I know my colleagues do as well. Um, it lets you search by min, serial number, which is the shorter of the two, right? So we have a min and we have a serial number. The min number is usually longer. Um, <laughs> the serial number, a little bit shorter. Um, the name of the tank, so when you're in the name of the tank section, we're going to talk about that in a minute. You can, you know, use partial. You don't have to completely type out the tank name and then the location name as well. So you don't just have one option for searching. You can look up a tank. You can look up tanks in a location. Um, so you can do that right here. Uh, that's an easy way to get to exactly where you need to go. And then the summary section. So this summary section right here gives you information and it's a snapshot of your tank's status, important alarms right here. Any reporting you know, that goes over here, these are hyperlinks that you can click on and go into reports. And it gives you access to them directly. So when you're looking at this, you're, whatever part of the organization you're in, if you're, and I'm gonna use this term, if you're a flat organization, meaning you have one giant organization that all of your monitors fall under, then you're gonna see all of the tanks right here. 
If you have multiple levels of organization, which some of you probably already do on this call, because I've I noticed a lot of current customers on here, and I know that some of you have multiple levels of organization. Um, either way, whatever works for your business is the way you have them set up, but you will see information here for whichever organization you're in and any monitors that are solely in that larger organization. So as I drill in, this number is gonna change when I look at the summary page. Um, so a lot of people ask me that question, why does it only say 19? Um, I have 300 times. Um, well, that's because you're Northern looking California. in this section. Oh, that's not me. I'm not sure who's unmuted, somebody's talking. Um, it's whatever section you're in, that's the number that you'll see down here um, of active tanks, maintenance tanks, whatever you know, you're know you categorized as at that point. So that is the summary section. Um, a lot of people use it, a lot of, you know, I think it's about a 50-50 mix. Most people dive right in and go into their tanks or they have a TVP set up and they're gonna go into that. So I said TVP, we're gonna go into that fully in later training. Um, because again, deserves an entire hour dedicated to why, how, and the results, right? Why am I using a TVP? How am I setting it up? And then what do I get when I set it up? So I know a lot of people have questions about that. Um, we are gonna dive deep into that. So that's another section. Um, again, I'm kind of just glossing over some of the high level stuff at this point. I wanna make sure that you all uh, understand we do have future sessions coming up that dive deeper into these um these pieces of information so when you log in um obviously you're not going to sit there and take that long to look at this page so how do i get to the action how do i get to where i need to be right so after logging in again if you're a large organization and you're under one organizational umbrella you will be right where you need to be there's no other way you know there's nowhere else to go organizationally so if you log in and you need to change your organization what you would do is click on the currently selected, and then that brings down a list of any other sub organizations that you have that are off of that main organization. So we do have some here. Um, you can search for them if you have a long list, because some customers really, really get down to it and organize very detail oriented. And again, some just have one big organization. Um, but here we do have um, four that we can pick from. So even if I just typed in energy, I would get Skybit's energy and I can look at that. Um, I would click on the organization that I wanted to go into. And as you see, everything kind of changes a little bit. The numbers change, not that you probably remembered what numbers I had before, but now the numbers are different. And all I'm showing down here are those Skybit's energy um, organization tanks. Um, there could be multiple locations within that organization, but I'm only looking at that one organization at that point. So when I'm in the larger, I will see, again, let me go back. When I'm in the larger organization or the account umbrella, I'll see every organization underneath of it. As I get more detailed, I can go next into a sub -org, like I just did, and then those tanks will load. Well, then this home navigational page will load. I'm not in the tank section yet. Um, so if I need to, we're gonna talk about how to create organizations, the reasons for creating them, and there are many um, for why you would want to then sub or out your larger group. Um, you know, really it comes down to keeping track of things in different places and different billable um, organizations, but We'll get into that in more detail in another session, and it's pretty soon that we do that because that's a early on thing you want to know how to do. But um, at that point, you're just looking at the tank, uh, the tank summary page for that org. And like I had mentioned, you're going to then see another level here of the path to where I am right now. So I'm at Skybit's Energy. Now, the global search feature that I had talked about, I kind of hit on it prior. Um, you can look for a specific tank or you can look for a group of tanks within an organization that you've access to. So again, we always have to preface with, if you have access to tanks that you need, you need to have access to tanks that you need to see, 
So you're not going to be able to see things that are out of your, you know, purview that were just, you know, designed by your administrator. Um, if there are issues with things that you can't see that you should, then you have to talk to the administrator of your account and then kind of work through how to um, set up that, uh, your user preferences. But again, we're going to review that in a later session on how to do that and how to successfully do that with the least amount of pain, right? So how to give access to people um, in the most quick and efficient manner. Um, so on the search bar, what I can put in here is a, a min, uh, a serial number, a tank name, or a location. So here I would look up, say, sales monitors and select my location name. I could go into sales monitors, um, and then I could hit global search right here, and it would just filter these out for me. Um, so let's just see that. And then it's going to kind of query the database. It might take a minute because I do have access to a lot of information, but here is Skybit's energy and only the sales monitors are here. And then I can pick which tank I need. So it's going to group the tanks by location. And then it's going to show me all of the tank names that are in that location. And I can go into an individual tank this way. So it kind of did a little filter for me prior to me even looking. I can do that when I log in. I just want to look at my sales monitor tanks. Boom, I can do it right there. Um, so that's a search functionality that we utilize heavily. I know I use the, um, I definitely use the serial number daily, multiple times. So um, global search, super important. Um, and you go directly where you need to in a very efficient, quick manner. And when you are searching for a tank, I mean, there are different ways you can find your tanks, but when I'm searching for a specific tank and I have the name of the tank or I have the um, min or the serial number, then I would just put that one in. So I have one set up already. And then I will change this to serial number because that's what I have. <laughs> search. Give it a second and it's going to find that specific tank for me. And then so that is how I would find the tank. And we could go right into it and look at that information. So we're going to go over again, we will go over tank details in another session, but that's how you would find a tank by using the serial number. If you know specifically what you're looking for, type in the serial number, type in the name, you can get right to it. Um, so that's the, one of the quick ways to be able to get right to a tank that you're, that you're in need of information on. Then I'll go back home so that we can kind of have a starting place here. All right, so what I've reviewed so far is logging in. Um, and again, if you don't have a login, you need to ask the administrator of your account. Our telemetry support folks, um, unless they have specific instructions from your company on setting up a user, um, they would ask you to go to the administrator of your account to have usernames set up. Um, so your, your account team has to work on that for you. I, we don't, we generally don't set people up, um, without a specific permission from a, from an account. Um, so we're able to do that. Um, you know, we're, we're able to, to tell you how to do it, but we're not able to set up users for you unless again, like we, I said, we have specific instructions or if you're the admin of the account and you need people set up, what we're going to do in a later session is show you how to do that step-by-step. Step. And you are able to call telemetry support to have, or your customer success manager, if you have one, able to help you in setting up a user um, and showing you how to set up permissions. So that's really going to set up how you're viewing the smart tank user interface. Um, so we reviewed logging in, um, skybits.com, bookmark the tank, uh, smart tank user interface login page um, so that you have easy access to it on your browser. Uh, username, password, you can sign up for Smart Tank Thursdays right there um, and let other team members know that um, over the next coming weeks, we will have 
very robust training. Um, we're going to get into hardware. We're going to talk about the user interface, setting up tanks. Um, we're going to do, we're going to run the gamut on the user interface um, and make sure that we hit all the points, the very, you know, the basic points, and we're going to bump it up a notch and make sure we get into the TVPs and, and stuff like that. Um, we're going to talk about the future of smart tank um, items, you know, that we have that we're looking forward to um, coming to smart tank and you know to skybits um, and you know we're going to make sure that we listen too so when you're thinking about what you need to learn about if you're thinking hey i need to learn how to set up a tank we are going to to talk about setting up tanks users organizations locations you know the basic stuff um, but if there are other items that you want to discuss um, We'll make sure that we listen you know, and incorporate this into our next sessions. So um, this is just the first uh, group of trainings that we have set up. Um, we're gonna get ready to answer some questions. And if you've typed any in the chat, that's great. I'm not sure, because I wasn't really looking at the chat. I was trying to pay attention here. I'm, I know my colleagues were monitoring the chat, um, which I thank them for. Um, so if there are any questions right now, we can unmute. Um, and if you ask a question prior, we will get to answer that. Again, thank you for that. We'll get to answer the questions, but I would like to ask if we could unmute um, the participants. And if anyone has questions, we yeah, hey. would be happy to answer. Yeah, hey, Sarah. Um, so thanks everybody for, for joining. Um, we Please, uh, if you have a question, you wanna ask it online, uh, there's a question button. You can raise, essentially raise your virtual hand, and I can unmute you uh, one by one so that we don't have an overflow of background noise. Um, and really, no internal questions during the session today. Um, realize that some folks were having some audio issues, so we apologize. Um, you know, we we provided the dial-in information, so hopefully that hopefully that helped. Um, but, you know, again, uh, we'll open it up for questions. If you have questions, go ahead and either type them in your uh, control panel or um, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll get you unmuted to ask a question. Yes, and if you muted yourself um, and you want to ask a question, you're going to have to unmute yourself and then we can uh, unmute you as well. So I know we went over a lot of basic items and most of you probably know about this. Uh, I wanna make sure that everyone's very aware that we are diving um, into more topics over the next uh, bunch of weeks that we have this scheduled for, so. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, yeah, the, so we had some pre-submitted questions. Um, oh, here comes some questions. Um, so you keep referencing a min number. What is a min number? Mobile identification number. Um, it's a long number um, found in, well, I'd always try to go with a serial number just because it's shorter, uh, but a min number is another way to identify the monitor um, in the system. So when we look at, I'll show you real quick. That's not gonna be a hard one to answer. Right. Hi, everybody. It's Allison. While Hi. Sarah's pulling that up, um, I just wanted to, so the MIN number, which is also called a cellular ID number, um, mm -hmm. in, you know, currently, it's pretty much the cell phone, or not the cell phone, I shouldn't say cell phone, it's the phone number that the unit uses to call out or, you know, that our data center uses to call into the unit, um, you know, on a weekly basis. That's That's what, I guess, in layman's terms, that would be what the MIN number is. Thank you, Allison. And it's right here. Um, and this is another way that you can actually find the tank that you're looking for with the MIN number. So it's right here. And on the hardware, um, if you're looking at the hardware, uh, Moishas, I think that you asked that question. Um, uh, Deborah actually asked that question. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So on the hardware, I guess it would be in a different location depending on what hardware you have. Um, but it's generally a longer number than that serial number is. See, here's the difference between the two. 
but so. And thank you, Allison, for that answer. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, the next question actually came in from Moises. Um, okay. I want to know how to log into the portal. So this maybe just a, a quick okay. step back to the beginning. You got it. He was having some audio problems in the earlier. That's fine. Perfect. So we would go to, I go to skydance.com. And or this is just initially for the first time you go to login and this is the quickest way for me. So that's why I'm using this. And right here is the login for smart tank. Um, you click that and it brings you to the username password screen. So what you would want to then do is depending on what browser you use. So I'm in Chrome. I would bookmark it and make it one of my favorites so that when I'm, you know, and I actually open up to this page when I open up Chrome, but um, bookmark it and call it Smart Tank or whatever you call it internally. Um, and then this is where you would type in your username and password to get into this section right here. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> All right. Um... I believe somebody else, I believe, had their hand up, um, but they took it down. Okay. Here. Okay. <laughs> um, so, any other questions? Otherwise, um, you know, a lot, some of the questions that were submitted prior to you know, Rock, Friday night. Um, were creating child organizations and, and moving existing monitors into that created organization along with viewers. Um, mm -hmm. So, we'll be discussing this along along the path as we go deeper uh, each week into different sections and ideas around Smart Tank and in Smart Tank. Um, a lot of these questions will be handled or answered. Mm -hmm. um, more uh, general knowledge requests. So I think you know, as we just go through this, um, you'll, you'll gather more. Um, how to organize tanks within my company that only pertain to my region to monitor. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, I think we'll, we're actually going to go through parent-child relationships and, and how to uh, do that. Um, uh, and services, I think there's some questions around 3G uh, sunsetting uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, we absolutely plan on covering uh, during one of these sessions as far as uh, FAQs and process uh, of what what you can expect during the uh, transition uh, this year during the uh, 3G to 4G transition and the 3G network shutdowns that are happening from the mobile operators. Um, so a lot of these will, will actually be answered uh, in future sessions. Um, let's see, there was a question that came in um location is based on gps or manually input and i believe that was answered um that the location on the website is created manually um however the units do have a gps feature um and that was that was it so you know certainly i will love to open it up one last time for any kind of q a any kind of questions you may have um, you know, if not, if your if your question wasn't answered, uh, certainly the email that you use to register, um, you know, you can reply to that, and then we can get it assigned out and get you an answer uh, quickly. Um, you know, you can also reach out to your uh, customer success manager if uh, you know you work with a CSM that is assigned to your account. Um, and we'll, we'll get you answers to uh, to these questions. So, Sarah, I don't see any additional questions, so I'll go ahead and throw it back to you. Thank you, sir. Um, and thank you to my colleagues for attending um, and helping out with this session. Um, thank you, especially to our customers. Um, we value, again, we do value your business, we value your voice, and we hope to see all of you and then some back next week. Um, so next Thursday, we are going to dive into Smart Tank more, as I had mentioned. Um, we're going to review how to view tank data, which will include working with the tank list, exporting the tank list, 
viewing the map and viewing tank details. So that's what we'll be talking about next week. And each week we're gonna kinda um, queue up what we're gonna talk about the following week. Um, so you'll know, you know if you need to attend um, or if others in your organization are going to need to attend. So as I mentioned, as I had mentioned, we are going to dive deep into the user interface to make sure you understand how to use it um, and why you would do certain things within the application. Um, so again, I thank you. Um, and the sessions are, again, recorded and will be put on the SkyBits YouTube channel along with much other content, uh, tons of other content that uh, you have access to. So if you could please go to the YouTube channel, SkyBits YouTube and subscribe. Um, sorry for <laughs> repeating that multiple times. Um, and keep giving us feedback. We are super, uh, receptive to the feedback. We want the feedback. We want to make sure that we're serving your needs and we want to make sure that we're hitting all the topics that you need us to. Um, so again, I would like to thank everyone for attending. Um, I'm not 100% sure in the survey, but I think we would be sending out a survey that will take about two minutes immediately following the webinar. Um, if you could just give us some feedback that would help us to ensure that our content is good and we're reaching you uh, and making sure that you're getting what you need. So thank you for joining today. We'll talk to you all next week. Have a great week.